Good day to you. I've decided to use the name for this particular experiment as Daft Man, because I must be daft to get involved with this kind of thing in the first place. But after seeing a few videos on YouTube, I, I started to get a bit inquisitive uh, and decided to go on, I'll have a go then. Um, let's see what all this hype is, whether it works or not. So here we go. Um, I've actually got two coils. I don't know if you can actually see that. 22 SWG, 26 SWG, and a 28 SWG. 500 turns. That's 500 turns. Bipolar. I think that's what you lot refer to it as. On that on that coil, and the same on that coil. Now, as you can obviously see from what I've and um, what I've just said. I've got three tapped in outputs. One is the actual pulse, one would be the trigger circuit, and one is a generation circuit. But obviously the trigger circuit also generates power as well. Same with that coil there, exactly the same as what I've just described. Uh, underneath, I don't really want to tip it up, but underneath, I don't know if you can actually see that, there's some magnets flying around, it's just tripping. Um, Reed switches. So the uh, the only difference we mind is you've probably seen that capacitor at the back and wondering what that's for. Right. Well, the first motor, which is the, the the drive motor, which is what I refer to it as, just so for clarity, actually drives uh, the outputs of those go down into the bridge rectifier here, which then goes off and charges that capacitor, I should put my finger too close to that, it's quite high voltage at the moment, which then goes into the second trigger circuit, which is on that board at the back, that triggers that motor. So, the output of the two generation sides of that motor go into the rectifier, charge that capacitor, triggers the second circuit, and then I tap the output off the second circuit into the next bridge rectifier, which then charges this battery. This battery has just come off charge this morning, it was um, about, I don't know, I think it's about 9, 10 volts, and it's now charging, just to show you, that's the reading from that battery, it's now charging, it's actually, I've got to put some sort of regulator on, it's actually overcharging very slightly, it went to 14 volts a few minutes ago. But you can see 1381 there. The supply battery is 1198 solid, and that's the current it's actually using at the moment. So, for some unknown reason, mine keeps speeding up a little bit and slows down a little bit. Uh, I'm assuming it's when the capacitor starts using the, the current, and it, it just seems to do this sometimes. I don't know why, but. Sometimes I've got to look into it. maybe it's just a bearing that's starting to wear or overheat. It has been running for, oh god, it's probably running for months now, non stop. This has. Uh, I have actually got a, a little electronic circuit that I normally have on this that um, switches the batteries over. So when this one runs down to about 8 volts, it switches over to the next battery and swaps the charge over at the same time. So it just keeps swapping the battery, flip flopping if you like, um, and keeps the whole thing running. The problem is, if you let the batteries run too low, and I've noticed this, if I let this battery here run down to about 2 volts, and then put a new fully charged battery on, which is what I normally use a pair at the back there, and I let them charge up, I find that it doesn't charge that battery back up fully. So over a period of time, the whole thing comes to a grinding halt. If I reset the voltage detection for the switch circuit to detect the voltage drop at about 8 volts, and then swap over, the thing will just run for months. I've actually had to stop it in the end because it's just getting on my nerves it running it back at the shed. So it's actually been running for many months um, and I've only just finally plucked up courage to put it on YouTube if you like and let you all see it. Because uh, you know it's not my I am an electronics engineer by trade and it's not my field and you know I understand a lot of people get uh, really ridiculed over this kind of thing so I don't want to destroy my reputation. As we can see, it's gone to 14.2.
was getting a little bit too high, hence the reason why I built the switch circuit, but I didn't want to complicate things, so I've just taken that off just to show you. So what it actually means as well, of course, we've got the back EMF collection point from both coils usable. So I've not even tapped them. So what I was trying to achieve is to prove that I can generate power without having no connection between the two batteries. So in other words, that one, the generation from that coil is tapped together here through the bridge rectifier to charge the battery and that's its current voltage. I'm going to have to shut it down there because I'm going to start mapping this battery because I'm just overcharging it and I don't like that. Um, although it's fluctuating a little bit, it does go up a little bit higher than that sometimes unless I'm using the control circuit that I normally use. So I hope that goes to some way of proving that this thing works or doesn't. All I can tell you is this has run for months. If you are interested in what this is, these are little bobbins of coils that go in these. Uh, three phase generators, it, 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 it's, it will be, with a fly plate on here with magnets. That's just the way if I have to kick start it, that's the way I kick start it, but it just starts automatically, I don't have to bother. Starts up very slow until that capacitor comes charged and then she bursts into life and off she goes. I just thought I'd uh, stick it on before I dismantle it because I've got no use or any interest in it really. It's just something I decided I wanted to play with one day. So, there you go. I uh, hope you can pick some bones out on it.